What's up, everybody? This is Jimmy with Trading Decoded. It is September 19th, 2024, and it's 4.08 in the afternoon. Um, I'm tired. I got about an hour of sleep last night, uh, so this video is going to be quick because an hour after open, we had a whopping 11 to 1 ratio. We had like 9 reds to 111 greens. Um, and then naturally it declined throughout the day because, you know, some people just can't walk away. But with that said, we're going to go over the few trades that we took. Um, after lunchtime, uh, they let me sleep. Uh, so I fell asleep on my couch and then I picked up my kids. And then after this video, barring the weather outside, I'm going to go to sleep at six o'clock tonight because I need some sleep. But with that said, let's go ahead and launch charts and uh, talk about what we were looking at. Uh, <clears throat> going into the open, the market was uh, was really, really happy. Everything in the top 10 was green. We were expecting ADD to open very much in the green and it did exactly that. Um, quite frankly, I was expecting a move to the upside early. Um, which it did the exact opposite at open. So although I was prepared for calls, um, we quickly switched because of a couple of reasons. Number one, we had a call put scenario as we always do. Our call line was at 570.99 or a close above. Uh, and our put scenario was a breach of 570.39, which is where this white arrow at our pre-market midline was or this white dashed line. You might not be able to see it, but we come up with these levels at 925 every morning. To the upside, I was a little bit more hesitant to want to play uh, simply because, well, I don't like to open at all time highs. It's just not, it's not something I'm comfortable with, but I can't deny that the market is what it is. Our top 10 was extremely green um, and uh, everything looked like it just was going to be a green day. However, <clears throat> when we opened, the very first thing that kept me out of taking calls, uh, as you guys know by now if you watch my videos, is I don't trade against the cues. Meaning, the cues made a big red candle to the downside. Okay? And uh, that tells me no calls. So why didn't we take calls? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Number one, we didn't close above our call line. And the reason we're looking for a close above is because we have no price action on the day above that level. So I think it's important to wait for a candle close when that's the case. Why? We don't have evidence of buying taking place above that point. That's why. To the downside, why was it a breach and not a close? Well, because if you look left below that line, each time we've managed to get, or when we did get managed to get below that line, we happened to make it down to the next level of support. That's all we're going by. More importantly, in this particular instance, uh, we made no support level on the way up during pre-market. So our real target to the downside on this trade was right down here to this yellow line, which is where that circle is. I took that trade exactly. I actually got in one minute later than this arrow, but for the people who were playing my call put lines, which there's a lot of you out there and you have a 90% win rate playing them, congratulations to you, that's fantastic. Um, <clears throat> yeah, this was the move we took. Now, a lot of people stayed in that trade. I did not. I ended up getting stopped out of this trade because I was really hoping for a gap fill, which it ultimately did. And of course, um, left a ton more money on the table. But hey, that is what it is. Today's trade was a 26.9% winner. So I would imagine all the way down there, you were close to 50 to 60 plus percent. Um, and then even farther, if you held on even longer, right? We had a downtrend line, uh, which is awesome. As long as we stay below that, I don't mess with the pink line anyway, so I probably wouldn't have held longer than the pink line, even if I made it there. But nonetheless, great entry. We broke support that was pre-market high. We breached the put line. It brought us right down to the next support, which was here. That's the trade I took. 
Cues were moving down as well. Everything was go for me to the downside for that reason. A lot of people took that trade as well, and a lot of people were one and done. It was at that point that we had, a, I think, five reds and, well, let's see, five reds and 70 green right after that. <clears throat> as you can see, I posted the poll at 9.38. Um, and if you look at the chart at 9.38, we were all the way he, right here. And we had that many people, 70 green traders in the room already in eight minutes after the market opened. All right, guys, uh, just understanding price action and getting out there ahead of the move. Not every time does it work, but it works often enough to, to make a living at it. Um, then we had a nice pullback to resistance, not only on SPY, but also a level of resistance on Qs during a downtrend. Okay, so at 9.49, the Qs were, uh, were coming off of lower highs again, and <clears throat> we are expecting support to fail off of lower highs, not hold. So for my aggressive traders and the ones who are paying attention to this thing, you pulled back to resistance on SPY, okay, and we were expecting support to fail on the queues off of a lower high. So we were looking for an additional leg down. That could have been a reason for you to get into this trade. And where you're hoping to take it to is Q's next support or SPY's next support, whichever one. Either way, you would have made money on that trade as well. Uh, however, we then found a bottom for the, for the time being. And I think it ended up being the bottom for the day uh, and broke the downtrend line. Okay, now this should be red, not green. It's just that I draw them a little bit quickly. Anyway, we broke the downtrend line. Just because we break the downtrend does not mean that you jump into calls right away, right? It just means two things. Number one, puts are off the table. As soon as you break the downtrend, which is the reason you were looking to stay into or get into puts, was because we were trending down. A close above that trend line has broken that particular reasoning, has it not? If that's the case, Take puts off the table. Well, when do you get into calls, Jimmy? That's a great question. And this is the two criteria method. Number one, you wanna close on the other side of the trend line. We get that. Number two, after you close above that trend line, look at the most recent lower high that you made on the way down. Make sure we close above that. Now you call calls. That's this candle here. Where are we looking to go? Well, stop number one is the first resistance that we created above this one. So line to line. If we get above that, we were expecting to go from here all the way up to here. It's the next resistance up in line that we made an attempt to make a higher low, or I'm sorry, a lower high on the way down here. Each, that's the steps we're looking for on the way up. Now, the first one was here. So if you got in here, you, 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 you could have got out here. You could have put a stop loss in place. You could have trailed your wins, whatever it was that you were doing. Some people play as long as we get a blow above this, uh, you know, I'll move my stop up to the most recent support level that we have here. And if we close below that, I'll stop myself out. Guys, I don't, I don't, I can't manage your trades for you. I could just tell you that if we are going trending up or down, and we break through a resistance during an uptrend, you should be aiming for the next resistance up as your first target spot. What we do or what you do when you get to that spot is completely up to you. It's your money, you're your own trader, right? You've got to manage yourself and your trades, okay? And your emotions, right? If you wanna hold through a level of resistance, that's fine. Just make sure that in case that resistance does hold and it shoots back in the wrong direction, you've got a stop loss there to prevent catastrophic damage. If you want to hold on to it, that's when I tell people, move your stops into profit, let it run. Let's see where it goes. You might get wicked out. You might get stopped out. Who knows? But either way, you'll get stopped out having made something for the effort you put in and the risk you took to do that. Okay? Um, as you can see, we stayed above this area of support right here. Uh, we did wick below it a few times, but ultimately we made it from one line up through to the next line. We pulled back, tested support down here, and then ran up again, pulled back, tested the support, also higher lows. We were talking about these higher lows on the way up. 
um, and how SPY is more likely to hold or break through resistance instead of hold because we, we talked about it here, which is why we were looking for here. Then we put in another higher low here, which is going to bring us through this resistance and up to the next one. Um, but nonetheless, some people held all the way and made it all the way to where our original profit target was going to be, should we have gotten in down here. Um, and then finally, we made it to through all-time highs and stopped at this line. And as we are stopping at that line, I'm saying to myself, I'm going to get a million questions as to how that line came to be. Why did it work? How, where did it come from? This is not a level of resistance from prior trading days because, well, there is no levels of resistance of prior trading days above this one right here. And this was made today. This one. This line here is a 50% retracement between this and this line. Now, where does this line come from? A pivot point, a Fibonacci pivot point. This is the halfway space between it. You guys can argue support and resistance all you want, but numbers, this is a numbers game. And, and I'm using numbers to, to find these levels at where, the, where they don't exist. I don't know if it was just luck uh, that it stopped there. I mean, I don't think the cues at that point were, uh, yeah, the cues at that point weren't at uh, a level of resistance, so we can't blame it on the cues. But either way, uh, Excellent opportunity to take profits or move your stop even higher. Um, likewise, uh, when we were looking for a counter trend trade, uh, we recognize that uh, we are trending up. OK, so we're trending up and uh, we've got a trend line here and the two criteria that we're looking for. Number one, we want to close below the trend line. Number two, you want to take out the most recent level of support below that line. Okay, Well, you had it here. We're coming off of a lower high, which means we're likely to see a break of the support anyway. Yes, a split candle is a form of support and or resistance. That's what these two guys are right here. We close below that. And the next one down is all the way down here at the blue line. OK, so you're going from support to support. From that support, we'd be aiming for this support. From that support, you'd be aiming for here and from there to here and from there to here. OK, we never got that opportunity, but it did make it to the first one the second one, and the third one down here uh, before it found ultimate support and never came back down again. Guys, after that, um, we could already start to see uh, the ratio of 11-1 to diminish a bit. And I am going to tell you right now um, that we closed the day. We closed the day. Still very green, right? Uh, we went from 11-1 to 1 to 4-1. to 1. Now, the reason I bring that up is not because it's not good that we weren't green. It's because the number of people that were green and continued to trade because of greed is the same people that are constantly asking me to help them get better at trading. I had to beg somebody today who flat out told me, and you know who you are because you're a member in our community, that they're more often red by a long shot than they are green. And I said, are you up today? And she said, yes, I am. I said, why don't you walk away? Well, because I have two day trades left. I said, does that mean you're going to end up being more green? Are you green most of the time? She's like, no, I'm almost always red. I'm like, why can't we just let this good time be left alone? You got to stop the bleeding, guys, before you can move forward. Help me, Jimmy. Help me stop shooting myself in the foot. Help me stop losing money. I'm trying, but you don't like what I have to say. Every day I wake up and I tell you guys the same thing. More trades does not equal more money. The reason the casino wants you to stay within the walls of the casino is because the longer you're there, the more you're going to play. And the more you play, the more you're going to lose. There are outliers where sometimes that's not the case. But typically speaking, the house does always win. You keep putting your money at risk in the market more times than necessary. 
Eventually, the market will win. Respect the market. Get past your greed. Get past the idea that you're going to get rich tomorrow. In the market, it's not going to happen. But you can be consistent enough to make a living at doing this. But it comes with patience, discipline, and respect for something you have zero control over. And with that, we're going to wrap it up. Hope you guys found some useful information in this video. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. If you'd like to join our Discord community, we'd love to have you. There's a link down below. And uh, I hope you all had a fantastic day as we did. Um, till tomorrow. I love you guys. See